I'd like to call a meeting to order and ask everyone to rise for a moment of silent prayer. And oh, sorry, I forgot roll call. Hold on a minute, we gotta have roll call. Make sure we're all still here. <laughs> Mayor Sorrell? Here. Assistant Mayor Grasso? Here. Councilor Farini? Here. Councilor Marshawn? Here. Councilor Panalakis? Here. Councilor Hines? Here. Councilor Reynolds? Here. Councilor Whitehouse? Here. Councilor St. Laurent? Here. All right, now we're going to start again. Uh, please rise for a moment of silent prayer, and then Councilor Steve Marshawn will lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance, followed by God Bless America. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. God bless America. Before we get into the presentation, I'm going to have uh, the assistant mayor, Joanne Grasso, uh, read the proclamation on regarding art speaks and then when she gets done I'd love to have the students come up they could give their name at the podium and then just come up and accept your little gift okay Joanne thank you your honor City Hall Court of New Hampshire a proclamation whereas March is known nationwide as Youth Art Month and whereas art education develops creativity, problem solving, critical thinking, and evaluative skills, and whereas art education gives students a deeper understanding of multicultural values and beliefs, reinforcing and bringing to life what students learn in other subjects, and whereas art education in the Portsmouth Public Schools includes a broad range of art experiences, and the art significantly enhance the quality of the whole school environment, and whereas it is the objective of the Portsmouth Public Schools to educate all students by challenging them to become thinking, responsible, contributing citizens who continue to learn throughout their lives. Now, therefore, I, Evelyn Sorrell, Mayor of the City of Portsmouth, on behalf of the Portsmouth City Council, do hereby proclaim the month of March 2005 as Youth Art Month and urge all citizens to support the purposes and practices of art education and encourage teachers, parents, students, and all citizens to appreciate and recognize the importance of art education programs in our schools. Given with my hand and seal, City of Portsmouth on the first day of March 2005, Evelyn Sorrell, Mayor. Thank you, Assistant Mayor. Uh, now I'm going to ask the uh, students to come up. Don't be bashful now. and. The cameras will be on you, so kind of wave to the people at home, like mom and dad and all of that. Just come right up to the podium there and pull down that mic so everybody can hear you. And just you give your name and then come on up and see me. Kiss you know. Very good. Lisa McDevitt. Brittany Reve, Tessa West, I'm not going to be able to give out the proclamation because Wendell Purrington will be in at our next council meeting with music and art. So I've got to hold on to the proclamation, but I can make sure the arts teacher gets a copy of it. This is Nancy Pollock. Oh, hi, Nancy. Oh, very good. We kind of got a little mixed up, and uh, Wendell is Wendell Purrington is coming to our next council meeting. 
but uh, I'd love to have you accept this. Okay, you're welcome. Did you want to say a few words? <laughs> I know that we're going to have another celebration at the Children's Museum next week and when Wendell Harrington comes back, but I'll still say thanks on behalf of all the art teachers in the Portsmouth School Department and all the wonderful student artists. Thanks. Thank you very much. Now we're down to uh, presentations. It's a presentation of the parking rate study. I will pass it to uh, the city manager, John. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. Uh, as the city council recall, uh, last year during our budget process, uh, we uh, worked at adjusting the parking meter rates and the parking rates in the garage. And one of the outcomes of that was that the city council had asked us to do a, uh, a uh, review of uh, parking rates as well as other parking issues. And I promised last year that I would get back to you in March uh, with uh, the first phase of the uh, parking study on the parking rates. And we have uh, John Burke here, the Director of Parking and Transportation for the City, as, as well as uh, uh, Chuck Conlon from uh, uh, CEG, uh, consulting firm who we've hired. I'd like to have John walk you through what the study's all about and talk about the uh, uh, the focus group that we have and, and what we're going to do tonight. John? Thank you, John. Good evening, Madam Mayor, members of the City Council. John Burke, Parking and Transportation Director for the City. Uh, the parking rate study is just the first of a really a three-part uh, comprehensive study as the manager alluded to. Um, be, uh, tonight you will hear the findings of the rate study, but beyond tonight, uh, we are working currently with a stakeholders group into the next phase, uh, which we'll be looking at specifically coming back to you maybe in a May-June time frame with one, the development of a capital replacement program for our on-street and off-street revenue control equipment as it is uh, in, in, in both cases uh, becoming dated. Uh, secondly, we'll be looking at a review of our current programs. As you know, we have a merchant validation program currently in existence. We have a valet service that we're doing as a pilot program. We want to review those services, see how they're benefiting the city and also look at new parking services that potentially could benefit the city, including, for instance, residential permit parking is one of the examples. Um, and finally, because of the amount of planned and approved development downtown, we are looking at how the impact of that development is impacting the supply and demand in the overall parking program. That, that too will be included. Uh, we have been working, as the manager noted, with a stakeholder advisory committee um, comprised of the Greater Portsmouth Chamber of Commerce, uh, Dick Ingram is here tonight. Um, the uh, Downtown Business Association and Paul Soley, the President, uh, Economic Development Commission, Everett Eaton has participated. And the Citywide Neighborhood Association, uh, Ray Will, uh, is here tonight as well. And um, our own Chairman of the Parking Committee, Council John Hines, as well as staff. Um, the Consultant Engineers Group is the cons selected consultant for the project. Uh, they're out of Cincinnati and Ohio. They are nationally recognized in the area of parking revenue control and parking in general structures and uh, throughout the country, eight offices throughout the country. I think we're fortunate to have Chuck Cullen here tonight. I <coughs> introduced Chuck to present the remainder of the study. He's Assistant Director of Parking and Transportation Planning. Uh, he has over 30 years experience in the parking industry, 12 of which was the Director of Parking for the City of Cincinnati. And he is the first, the nation's first, I believe, certified Administrator of Public Parking. With that, I'll turn it over to Chuck. Okay. Thank you. <coughs> <coughs> Pierce to be on. Um, evening, Honorable Mayor, Mayor uh, Councilors, and citizens of uh, Portsmouth, New Hampshire. Uh, as as uh, John mentioned, my name is Chuck Cullen. I'm with the Consulting Engineers Group. And tonight what we're going to be doing is presenting a summary of some of the findings to date on our parking rate analysis. <clears throat> the, the purpose of looking at the parking rates essentially is, determine, is, is to determine whether or not the parking rates that are currently uh, in use here in Portsmouth are appropriate for the city here. 
Uh, and what we have done is essentially looked at the market conditions in downtown Portsmouth. We've looked at some comparisons with other cities. Uh, we've looked at the mission and goals of the parking, uh, of the parking uh, department here. And we've also, since the rates have already been implemented, we've looked at some of the impacts that the rates have had over the last six years, there are six months. Um, we also wanted to look at, during the public hearing uh, process last year, apparently there were a number of suggestions and comments concerning parking rates. So we also wanted to take a look at some of the alternatives that were suggested during that process. As you know, currently the, the rates that are in effect now are since, uh, essentially for 75 cents per hour for the uh, metered parking and the hourly rate in the uh, garage. Previously, there were 50 cents an hour. All the other rates for contract parking, as well as the, some of the remote lots, uh, those rates have remained the same. So the only change essentially was right here for the meter parking and the hourly rate in, uh, for the garage. So the first thing we did is take a, uh, take a look at the market conditions in downtown Portsmouth. And essentially what we found is that there's obviously, as well as, as you know uh, better than I, that there is a mix of uh, office, retailing, um, dining, entertainment, and so forth. So because there are a variety of different uh, parking, uh, parking uh, different uh, uh, venues downtown, we need a variety of parking services in order to meet them. Uh, there certainly a, seems to be a robust uh, demand for parking in the downtown area, uh, particularly on weekend uh, evenings. Uh, we saw quite a few cars um, in the downtown area. Um, and particularly, in, as I understand that, it even increases more in the summertime. Uh, we also notice uh, some decrease in supply in the downtown area. So when you combine, combine the decrease in supply with the uh, increase in demand, obviously that creates an economic condition where you would actually be favorable to increase rates. And I'm not suggesting that at this point in time. So don't, uh... The second thing that we did is look at the uh, comparison, and we looked first at the on-street rates. We looked at 20 cities uh, throughout the United States that have uh, populations of under 100,000 uh, people. Uh, and what we saw in, in that particular survey, the hourly rate average was about 70 cents an hour. Uh, again, these are for parking meter rates, on-street parking. We also looked at some cities in the region, uh, as you can see here. Some of the cities here that have, they're currently charging 50 cents uh, an hour. Uh, some that are, the, the one that we nearby is a Boston is a dollar, and Albany, New York is at a dollar 25. So overall, we saw that the rates here in Portsmouth are about near, just slightly uh, uh, near the average. When we compared the off street parking uh, for the same 20 cities, we saw that the average hourly rate was $1.64. We're here in Portsmouth, you're at 75 cents. So obviously you're, you're below the average uh, when it comes to off-street parking. Uh, again, we looked at some other cities nearby. We've been contacted the University of New Hampshire and they charge a dollar an hour for uh, um, visitor parking. Uh, the other interesting finding is that we saw the Harbor Place garage, which was about three blocks from the high Hanover parking facility is currently charging $2 an hour. Um, so obviously your rate there is below the average. The next thing we looked at after looking at market conditions and comparisons, we looked at the mission and goals of the parking uh, operation here in Portsmouth. And what we have, we have here is the mission of the parking program is to actively promote downtown Portsmouth as a, a regional center of, of commerce, culture, and community. And from that mission statement, we examined the five goals that the parking program has at this time. Uh, the first one, obviously, is to provide outstanding customer service. Obviously, that commitment requires adequate training, staffing, and a lot of maintenance. Uh, that, of course, has an impact on the budget. Uh, we also looked at the, the other goal. The second goal is to support the transportation policies of the city. Again, if you have, you can depending on where you set your rates, you can have an impact on how many people ride the bus and how many people don't ride the bus and so forth. So that was something that we looked at at the same time with the rates. The third goal was to manage the parking assets that you have, both the on-street and off-street. So we were looking at parking rates that would be providing sufficient revenue to do the maintenance in the garages, to provide the upkeep of the parking meters, 
and essentially to operate on a financially sound basis. Also, and another thing that's important for the uh, city to consider is also the ability of the parking system to expand to provide additional parking spaces in the downtown area and in other areas as well as necessary. The fourth goal is to support the downtown uh, businesses. Uh, this certainly is being done at this time. The uh, short-term rates, uh, they have, I mean, short-term uh, meters in the downtown area are certainly favorable to provide a turnover of parking spaces. And uh, the city currently offers a validation program uh, to help uh, business is in the downtown area. Uh, the fifth goal is to support existing uh, downtown residential living. Uh, currently, the city does offer a uh, downtown rate for uh, contract parking in its garage. Uh, however, currently no one is using that rate, so we want to take a look at that, and we'll mention that uh, a little bit towards the end of some things we can do to improve that. So overall, when looking at the, uh, the various goals that the city has, we found that the rates currently seem to be able to support the infrastructure of the, of the facility, it's able to provide adequate service and so forth. So we didn't see and the need for a lot of uh, major adjustments in the rates based on the mission and goals that the city has at this time. But again, as I mentioned, since the rates have already been uh, in effect for over six months, we were able to go back and look at the data to see what, if any, impact the, uh, the 75 cents per hour rate has had. Um, when we look at the off-street parking, primarily, again, at the uh, parking garage, uh, the average duration, in other words, how long people are parking in the garage, is about the same. There's been no major differences. We did notice uh, the weekdays, uh, the average stay is down maybe about 11 minutes. That could, of course, be due to weather conditions and other things. And we also notice on weekends it's up 11 or up uh, nine minutes. So that's just uh, a sample of the uh, data that we took to discover those uh, issues. The interesting uh, impact that we did notice was the switch from the uh, transient customers to contract customers. Uh, <laughs> what we've noticed now that the, the, the garage is parking fewer transient customers per day. However, they're parking more and more contract con uh, customers. If you notice here, just in November of last year, they sold 399 contract permits for that month. In February last month, they were up to 509. So that's a significant increase in the number of contract parkers. And at the same time, there's almost, if you would graph it, you can almost see a, a, a similar adjustment in the, in the decrease in the number of uh, transient customers. So there's a switch, and I'll explain to that why that's happening in our opinion in a minute. When we looked at the rate impact uh, for the on-street parking, we first we took a survey of utilization of meters. Uh, we went around and recorded license plate numbers of vehicles and see how long people were parking there and so forth. Uh, we found two things that the occupancy was above 90% from about noon throughout the afternoon, which is very good, which means you're getting, you know, your people are using it. In fact, it's a little too good because when your occupancy reaches above a 90% level, that means people are having a hard, there's not as many parking spaces available on the streets that you would like. Again, this was taken in the uh, core downtown business district uh, in uh, early, uh, early part of December. The other thing we found that was uh, very good, um, that the turnover rate, in other words, we measured these, the meter occupancy for seven, seven hours and most of the meters there were two hours in duration. So we would expect, ideally, you would want to have each space turn over three and a half times during those seven hours. We found that they were turning over 4.78 times, which means that's very good. Um, the, since the fact that you're exceeding your benchmark means that your, uh, your enforcement policies as well as your rates are exceeding any expectation that we could provide or any guidance that we could provide. So you have con somewhat conflicting. The occupancy tells you that you, you, know, you could raise your rates a little bit, but at the same time, the turnover saying, it's perfect right now, don't change a thing. So we also, before making any recommendations, we looked at some of the alternative rate concepts that were presented to uh, the council. Uh, the first thing we looked at were seasonal rates. And it, it's certainly in terms of the core downtown area, we don't recommend them. Uh, they, they, it is a potential to raise uh, your revenue, 
but that uh, has not been a goal of the or a goal of the parking system is to just you know raise revenue in the, as high as you can get. Uh, at the same time, if you visualize a parking meter that one day is 50 cents an hour and the next day it's 75 cents an hour because it's now April or May the 1st, someone who's parking there all of a sudden now, all of a sudden has an instant rate increase or something like that. Uh, assuming they notice it, uh, if they don't, they're going to get a ticket. Um, so the odds are it's going to decrease your customer satisfaction with that program. So because of those two reasons, we're not recommending it, certainly in the core business area. Um, we looked at variable rates as, as a way to might uh, promote the more retailing activity downtown. And that would be where you offer low uh, hourly rates to begin with, say 75 cents for the first three hours, and then progressively higher rates in order to encourage more people to leave the garage after, say, three or five hours or something of that nature. That's something we looked at. I think that's something uh, when we get to the recommendations. Uh, we didn't include that one, but it's something that could be considered in the future depending on uh, what the impact of the other garage could be. Um, we have uh, we looked at different rates for both on-street and off-street parking. Uh, we felt that was a good idea uh, because what you could do then is it provides better management. You may want more parking on street, less parking on street, and by adjusting the rates differently, uh, you can achieve that. Um, another alternative we looked at was the flat rate, and we certainly uh, were, in other words, in other words, you, you charge a, a, uh, just a, uh, an event rate or something of that nature uh, for times when they're going to have a, a lot of cars coming in the garage and exiting at the same time. Uh, this would be particularly useful, I believe, on weekends in the evenings, uh, and certainly we recommend that. Um, as far as the uh, a maximum rate, currently the, uh, the garage has no maximum rate. It's 75 cents an hour till whenever. Uh, so from a customer point of view, we thought it was, uh, we looked at the idea of uh, establishing some type of maximum rate per day, and uh, that's one of the recommend recommendations that uh, we are uh, making uh, and when we discuss that further in a minute. The other, the other thing we mentioned before is about the, the change between the transients and the contract uh, customers. And here we notice that for $80, I can buy a, permit, a contract permit that allows me to park basically from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Um, if, if I park just 10 hours a day, an average of 22 days a month at uh, 75 cents an hour, I'm going to pay a dollar, $165. So for $80, that's a considerable difference between the two. So that's something we think the city needs to look at more closely to determine whether or not that's a fair method of allocating the parking resources. And actually, for another $20, I can get a permit now that's valid for 24 hours. So again, that comes up to maybe 14 cents an hour of parking, assuming I just stay there in the garage all the time. But uh, but that does give you some idea of where you're at as far as your contract rate. So there's something that uh, needs to be looked at. So again, after looking at the market conditions and the, all the other factors that we had mentioned, uh, we come down to basically what our recommendations are at this point in time. Uh, our preliminary recommendations, the first one is to have a uh, bien biennial review of rates. So every two years, yeah. we're recommending that the city takes a, uh, a good hard look at their parking rates and determine whether or not uh, any of them need to be adjusted. Uh, for right now, we're, we're recommending that the city maintain the 75 cents an hourly, hourly rate for their parking meters and for the parking garage. We do want to expand the use of the flat rate. We're recommending right now about a $4 rate uh, for that for special event in order to get the cars out of the garage after those special events. Um, we want to establish a maximum daily rate, and our recommendation is at $10. We want to uh, uh, set up different rates for on-street and off-street parking in the future. It's something that does not have to be done right now, but it's something that should be considered the next time the rates are adjusted, depending on what the council policy is at that time. We also want to create a relationship between the hourly and the uh, contract uh, parking so that if the contract parking or the hourly rate goes up, there should be some adjustment in the contract rate. Um, so that's something that needs to be looked at. 
And again, on the, the night contract parking, currently no one is using that. I mean, zero, there's not even anyone. Uh, and what we found is primarily because it's only valid from 7 p.m. to 7 a.m. Uh, and even though the rate is very attractive, um, people who get off work, say at 4.30 or 5, they can't get into the garage till 7 p.m. So quite frankly, it's not very useful to them. So what we're recommending is a series of improvements, uh, uh, maybe some dedicated spaces in the garages where they could uh, park either on a, a longer, you know, more favorable terms to them that we're still looking at with the city, whether it's, uh, you know, say starting at 4.30 p.m., Till you know 7:30 a.m. something of that nature. So those are essentially the highlights of the recommendations um, right now. And uh, hopefully I've uh, explained to you a little bit about what we have done, uh, what we have looked at, and what our recommendations are at this point. Uh, we're still look, we're still working with the city administration and with the uh, stakeholders uh, to formulate the final report. Uh, Your Honor, what what I I know that Chuck uh, has made a comprehensive uh, presentation and certainly would have city council members uh, encouraged to ask questions, but I just want to let the council know that part of what we would do with the recommendations is work with the, uh, the parking committee, which uh, Councillor Hines is chair of, to kind of ferret out more of the detail. And then what we would do is come back to the city council with a recommendations from the parking committee. Uh, this is a result of uh, uh, stakeholder input uh, along with staff input. Uh, but the next step I would say after tonight is to send this over to the uh, parking committee and then come back with some formal recommendations uh, with, the, uh, 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 with the information that we've had available. But at this time, Your Honor, I certainly uh, would uh, ask that if there are any questions that uh, Chuck, uh, answer those for every, any of the council members. Any questions of the councilors? Uh, Steve and then Tom. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I appreciate what you just said, uh, John. Uh, the question I get asked about is uh, how the, uh, the difference in the, uh, the penalty for going over the two-hour limit, uh, how has enforcement, uh, the amount collected from that enforcement changed since uh, this past summer? Uh, you mentioned that the turnover of spaces is at a very desirable level right now, the on-street spaces. And uh, one thing that crossed my mind is uh, how much of an impact does people thinking, you know, geez, if I uh, don't get this space out in two hours, I'm going to pay a fine that is at a level that makes me think about it as compared to something that you might see as negligible. And how much <laughs> has that changed since uh, this summer? Well, one comment. One comment. One comment on the uh, the fines, although it wasn't in the presentation in our report, we also looked at the the fines that are charged in. in <laughs> on the uh, for various uh, you know city regions and so forth, and we looked at the fines amount, and it's basically it, it's typically average, and maybe a dollar off from what other cities are signed. So it's not it's totally not. I'm not answering your question directly, but just to let you know, it, it's in line with most other cities and so forth of the size. Yeah, and just to fill in the, the blanks on it as well, what we're seeing is, first of all, I want to make sure the fine is in line with the average, which is what Chuck just said. But beyond that, we are noticing the behavioral changes for sure in the sense that, and you saw the transient, the customer, the uh, contract customer going out, more people are buying leases. Undeniably, we haven't seen an increase like that in seven years that I've been here, um, which is part of it. And we're also seeing some people choosing more of the free parking uh, options that are just outside. So there's no question, and I think it would be backed up by our enforcement people anecdotally, uh, that we are seeing availability, and that's what you want to some degree. So you all set? Yes, thank you. John? Thanks, Mayor. Just a question. I don't know if it's for John Chucker, uh, John Bohengo. If possible, when you provide the next report, given the recommendations that you have made, it would be nice to see a comparative analysis between the revenue picture as we have actual and then with the projected recommendations so we could see what the differential is, right. if that's possible. And, and that's something we can provide, but when we will be footnoting that to a certain degree because there's a couple things that have happened. Because of the winter time we've had, you're going to see some, some differences from prior winters. 
especially on the street. You might see the uh, in the, the garage spike a little bit, but, but that's something we can provide, and we will provide that as part of it. But I think it's important also we don't want to fine people for uh, exp expiration of meters. We, our intent is to get the turnover. So that will come down slightly too, which is fine, because that's not what we're in the business for. We're not in the business to collect fines. <clears throat> so, but that's a good question. We'll get that information. Uh, Councilor <coughs> St. Laurent. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, I noticed in your presentation that it seemed that the off-street versus the on-street parking shouldn't be the same price. And in the last time that that the council passed pricing uh, uh, in, on parking, they had 75%, 70 cents, 75, 75 cents in the parking garage and on street. So your recommendation seems to point to the fact that that shouldn't be that way. Like the off street should be less than the on street. Is that is that what I? Well, I I think. What the uh, what our survey showed is that most of the the 20 cities that we surveyed, generally speaking, they have a higher garage rate than on street rate. Higher garage. Yes, it was a dollar 64 on the average per hour, as opposed to 70 cents for the meter rate. Uh, as a parking planner, we like to see the reverse typically, uh, but there's you know cities look at parking from different points of view, uh, and you know, that just happened to be the survey. But generally speaking, in the ideal world of parking, uh, most cities would, you know, we would usually recommend a higher on-street meter grade because that is your premium parking, and that's the location where you generally want the most turnover uh, and so forth. It generally then deserves to have a higher rate because it's a better quality, better convenience, and so forth. So. And you're also forcing them into the garage and, 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 and yeah. giving more, more availability yeah. on straight. Sure. On street and that's, and that's and particularly you want people, and you want to discourage uh, repeat metering. You want people to park, if they're going to park long term, you want them to get off the street. So. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Councilor Whitehouse? Uh, yes, Chuck, did you uh, get a chance to get out into our community and uh, uh, look at some of the uh, on-street parking in some of the tight neighborhoods, not only the south end, but the west end, the uh, north end? Um, I did have an opportunity on one of my visits here to take a look at part of the rate, it's not part of the rate study, but part of the uh, parking study that we're, we've been asked to perform is to look at a potential of a, a residential parking permit program. So I did walk with one of the enforcement officers up through, and I don't know if it's Probably east, west. Uh, right off the downtown yep, west area. Uh, east of the Alza Shoals. Yeah, I have to <laughs> get my directions straight. But uh, I did go through one of the walk through one of the neighborhoods and observe the uh, the crowd of conditions and so forth in the uh, primarily residential area. Yeah. And that's going to be addressed, I think, in the third uh, report. I see. Okay, thank you, Chuck. Any other questions? Very good. I want to thank you very much, sir. Very enlightening. Uh, Your, Your Honor, if I might, uh, by consensus of the council, uh, is it okay to bring this back to the parking committee and then come back with recommendations? So moved. Second. John, did you have anything you wanted to, any input? Oh, I think they've covered the issue pretty well. Uh, I think most people recognize that the parking and traffic committee addresses the concerns of the parkers we do not formulate policy or set rates. <clears throat> thank you, John. All right, thank you very much. And, and John Barrett, move the motion. Uh, we'll have to move the motion here. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Thank you. Now we're down to the public comment session. I think you all understand how that works. It's three minutes only, and we have six speakers tonight, and the first speaker being Robin McIntosh, uh, Kearsage Way, Advanti Development. That is what she's going to speak to. Uh, when uh, Bob holds up the card that says thank you, then you all sit down and uh, 
Uh, Bob can't find the card. Well, Your Honor, the thank you card seems to have taken a walk. Well, how do you <laughs> buy <like> that? <laughs> yellow pad. <laughs> uh, Your Honor, I'll hold up the yellow pad. Okay, <laughs> very good. Go right ahead, Robin. Hi, I'm speaking on Avanti um, development this evening and the um, request for conveyance of property to them, which is up in Atlantic Heights. And I'd just like to urge um, careful consideration, if not postponement, of that decision for a while until there's a little bit more information for a couple of reasons. One, this may seem like a last-minute request, but actually we really weren't aware until a couple weeks ago that this property was even still property of the city and had not already be, been conveyed. Um, a few years ago, the neighborhood requested the city uh, utilize that for off-street and snow band parking, and at the time, the city was not clear whether they actually held the deed for that property, as I understand it. They, I believe, thought that the state had it, and so we dropped the request. But that certainly is a need up in the neighborhood, and we'd like that to be considered And what is the best use for that property. If it's determined that development is indeed the best use for that property, um, We'd like to have careful consideration of the project on a whole. It hasn't been fully presented at this point. Um, the De uh, Avanti Development has given verbal assurances that they're willing to have the granting of the variances tied into the design of the project. And we've been speaking with them um, for a while about trying to make that project fit within the neighborhood, the general design of the neighborhood. Atlantic Heights has been um, working to get on the National Historic Registry and the master plan also discusses doing historic overlay district of that area and where that building is going to be the entrance to the neighborhood and the backdrop to Hanscom Park that the neighborhood has certainly put a lot of resources in. We'd like to make sure that it does fit. Um, they have given verbal assurances that they're willing to tie variances or conveyances to the design of the project and we'd like to make sure that that is in fact done so that there isn't a potential for somebody else to come in and purchase a permitted piece of property and then do whatever they'd like down the line without that design being um, worked into the, um, the agreements that are placed on the property. We do thank Avanti for working with us on the design. We've seen some preliminary designs and they've certainly come a long way from the initial design of the project, which was a large box, to down to six units is what they're at now. And um, they are certainly going closer to what the design of the neighborhood is. And we would just like to see that continued and be put in writing. So thank you. Thank you very much, Robin. Robin is our new chairperson of the citywide neighborhood meetings. And she will be having her first meeting tomorrow night. Mm -hmm. Everyone is invited. Uh, now we're down to uh, Nancy Brown, and she's going to talk about the work session. Now, I would like to make something clear right now. I think maybe to Macy and to you, the reason why we changed mm -hmm. the room from conference room A back to here was for one major reason. Conference room A will only take up to about 75 people comfortably. But uh, from what I'm receiving regarding the Bill of Rights, you're going to have quite a crowd here. So you're going to need this room, all right? I know you had concerns about it. and. Uh, Bob, who have you invited to? Um, Your Honor, the uh, United States Attorney has indicated uh, that he would be here, and I've uh, heard indirectly that uh, Claire Abel, who's the um, in charge of the New Hampshire Civil Liberties Union, also intends to be there. Okay. So that's why we've done it, because we didn't want to squeeze you all in there and, and have people out in the hallway. Okay, so go right ahead, Nancy. Thank you. Um, good evening, Mayor and City Councilors. Um, thank you for this opportunity to, to speak with you. I found out this morning that there was this request to reschedule the work session regarding the Bill of Rights and the Patriot Act, and we're asking that you keep the scheduled date and the place as it was originally planned a month ago because we've put so much work and effort into asking people to come, and um, I'm I, we're, many of us are concerned that you've changed the date, and we feel that this is a disservice to our community to change the date after we've already put so much work into it. Um, and I think, um, I, I think the room is plenty big for the, the number of people that we expect to participate. Um, and 
I just want to remind you that this is a non-binding resolution um, and it's a, basically a statement of our rights um, and our democratic values. So we're hoping and requesting that you will please not change the date or the venue and keep it as scheduled for next Monday evening. Thank you. Uh, the next speaker is Macy Marsh, uh, Market Street, Work Session for Resolution. Yes, Mayor Evelyn. Um, my name is Macy Morse. Um, I, I want to uh, uh, reiterate what Nancy has said, that uh, we would like to go ahead with the, the planned date, uh, that we don't anticipate uh, uh, people falling out into the halls. If uh, they do, uh, that would be an example of our great democratic uh, activity in this community. Um, I also um, uh, want to know uh, what the process is for uh, notifying us. I don't think we weren't notified that this would uh, uh, would come up at this session tonight. And is there a way that you could let us know ahead of time uh, uh, if this happens again? I did speak with Sue Madden. And we did have was that today or I uh, no, uh, when we were thinking about changing around uh, and she said she thought maybe a hundred and we were guessing and from the literature which is about that thick that I'm getting from people you're not going to be able to get into conference room a comfortably so we can't keep switching back and forth because uh, the council chambers is booked way ahead, and so is Conference Room A. So I am pleading with you to stay with this date. I really am because I think you're going to need the room. We we feel that this is a very timely uh, subject, and that needs to be addressed uh, as soon as possible. Mm -hmm. And so. I still would like to see it take place on the 14th if, if you if the council can make make their the way clear for that. Thank you. Thank you, Macy. Uh, the next speaker is Sherry uh, Garrity, 968 Middle Road, 4% budget. Good evening to everyone on the board. My name is Sherry Garrity. I live at 968 Middle Road. Um, I just don't want to sound angry or anything. I just want to sound disappointed at the last city council meeting on February 14th. I think it was a shame and a very bad um, timing on the 4% that was brought up at that meeting. Um, if you have a joint budget committee and that was kind of, I think, their role and everything to come up with what they came up and presented at the 5.5, then it seems like that was a waste. And if you were going to do the 4% or wanted to see any cuts, I think you should have presented that um, two months ago or long before you did um, at the last meeting. I was very happy to see at least two members at least want to see the difference between the four and the five, uh, five and a half or six level rate of, or whatever you would like to call it, um, but then disappointed to know that they didn't at least vote no um, when the 4% was brought to a vote. Um, I also think it would be really great if you guys were all on the different, like you have members on the planning board, you have members on all these other committees, but I've been going to almost every meeting here for nine months, and I've also been going to every um, school board meeting for nine months, and I don't see any of you at any of those meetings. So I think the communication also between um, the two most important um, committees that I feel in this city, and there's nobody um, representing each one of you on those two boards, and the communication I think is Sad. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker is Peter Bresciano, 101 O'Leary Place, City Budget. Thank you, Madam Mayor, City Council Member, staff. Uh, first of all, I want to say that I agree wholeheartedly, 100%, with, with, with what this young lady just said. Having said that, the way the city council is going after the budget, you'd think this year was an election year. 
I was surprised and a little shocked at some of the comments coming out of this council regarding the way in which the budget, uh, and way which budgets are arrived at down in the departments. If the council was as enthusiastic about having the feds pay what is due us in special education funding as you are with this stupid Bill of Rights USA Patriots Act resolution, we wouldn't have the problems in the school budget that we're having. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you, Peter. Last speaker is George McQuillan of 419 Marcy Street regarding parking. Uh, is he here or gone? I think he, he left, left me. All right. That ends the uh, public comment session, but I will ask the counselors, counselors, do you want to take a vote to change that work session to conference room A instead of here in the council chambers? It's on the agenda. Oh, it is it's further there. down. Yeah, it's under the name there. there. Oh, okay. Why don't we uh, Why don't we do it now while they're here? Let's just, somebody suspend the rules. Move to suspend the rules. Second, just so that we can take Pick up, up um, six item six three. Nine, six three. nine B one. B one. Is there a second? Uh, second. Second. Okay. Uh, discussion? Any discussion on this, Ned? Um, just the motion to suspend the rule. Oh, the, I'm sorry. I'm the sorry. The rule. This is the motion to suspend. Sorry, my bad. All right. Um, the rules. Motion. All in favor? We all set. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Okay. It's your right. Okay, it's my item. Uh, yeah. Ms. Ralph? I said it before, and I will repeat it. If you have a large crowd, the fire department will be in here, and we will be getting the devil, mm -hmm. because they will not allow people to farm in the corridors or anything like that. Now, I'm going to be right up front. We can't keep switching back and forth because uh, the school department was going to have their budget. And so, I mean, we're switching everybody. If you feel that there will not be a crowd of more than 75 people, then I will take, I will ask the council to vote on it. But I'm telling you right now, if you have more than 75, uh, they will be removed because you just can't have it there with the fire department. So uh, it's up to you people, but this will be the final vote on this. Um, that would be my motion uh, to, uh, What's your motion? to reschedule. March 28th. Okay, March 28th. 28th yeah. 24th. And there's a, there's a second. Is there a discussion? You get a second, Verena? Did I get a yes. second? Yes, Councilor yeah. Marshawn. Was there a discussion? Yep. Uh, Council Whitehouse? Yes, uh, I'm going to support the motion because uh, what I hear on the street, I agree with the mayor, uh, there will be a tremendous turnout. And I think we have to schedule it for our television coverage and for the capacity of people in this council chambers. And for the 28th, I will support that motion. Further discussion? Councilor Reynolds? Well, it's kind of a, it's kind of a funny one. Um, I talked to the folks who were here just before the meeting, and of course they spoke at the public comment, and it sounds to me like they're, they feel like, you know, you're killing them with kindness. Um, you know, they, I think they have a legitimate point that this council scheduled the work session on this topic three weeks ago at a council meeting, and what I've heard them say is that they've done a lot of work um, communicating with folks and letting them know about a certain date and urging people to come. So I realize that there's a bit of a, 
uh, conundrum there in that the more people they successfully got to come might exceed the capacity of the room. But, I mean, I've heard them ask that we keep the date that was set because they've gotten people focused on that date. So I think I'm going to vote against the motion. Any further discussion? Council motion? Uh, just to be clear, and I think, Mayor, you mentioned this a few minutes ago, uh, if we keep the date, and that means keep the smaller room, and more than the capacity indeed show up, which I think is the fear, which is the reason for the original discussion, uh, maybe it's an obvious question, but what happens to anybody else who shows up beyond that nth person that fills the room? Your Honor, should I get that? Yes, Bob. Um, that's actually one of the problems. If uh, uh, Conference 2 may hold 49 people, uh, any more than that who show up would not be allowed into the room. In order to give them their right to attend public hearings, public meetings, uh, we'd have to reschedule the meeting at that time or find an alternate location at that time, which I don't know that there is one. So if you're saying the number is actually not anything close to 100, but more like 50. Yes, uh, I am saying I guess the question I would have, I don't know if we're in line to ask this, is are, is it unreasonable to say that we might get 50? Because if you get 50, we're going to end up having to reschedule it anyway? Is that accurate? Right, they would not be allowed. People have a right. I don't know the answer, obviously. It's, uh, that's a question that's not rhetorical. I have no idea what the answer is. Um, Council Penlocker. Yes. <clears throat> Seeing that they have the people have at least 20 more days in order to relate to the people that, that the date has changed. Um, and the fact of the matter is that if we get over 50, we're going to have to reschedule. It almost forces me to vote for, for the 28th to make sure that everybody is heard and is able to get to say what they want to say. So mm -hmm. I would ask the people out there if they would try to um, get in touch with the people that they've contacted and change it to the 28th. Yeah. Um, Your Honor, are we talking Portsmouth residents here? Uh, we will be talking when it comes to speaking, Portsmouth residents only. We have got to stop having everybody in here speaking at the podium that don't even live in Portsmouth. This is for Portsmouth people, but I do feel that Council of the White House, we do agree on something, Harold. Uh, he's right. We've got the television. The people at home can see it. We couldn't do that in conference room A either. And I think the people at home have every right to hear about it. So uh, uh, that's where we are. I will be changing uh, the public comment session around, not tonight. But uh, we've got to start clamping down on just our Portsmouth people. Um, Council St. Laurent. Uh, thank you. <clears throat> uh, I, really, it doesn't matter to me 14th or the 28th, but uh, I'm just wondering if, if they're set on the 14th because they have, I mean, I don't know how necessary it is for this to be, uh, be on television, but could we use another place like the school, one of the schools? that has an auditorium? Uh, do we have to be here? I'm just throwing this out as a suggestion. I mean, if it's vastly important that they have the meeting on the 14th, could we look at another place to hold this meeting? That's, that's just a question that I have. So I have no opinion on either mm -hmm. the 28th. Or the mm -hmm. Any further discussion? Council Sereni. I would just offer that respectfully that while I can understand that there is significant inconvenience um, and what work has been done to try and schedule this, um, we are hardly not acting in the public interest to seek to provide people more opportunity to see uh, what it is uh, is going to be presented. And for that reason, and given that there's more lead time, as Council Penalakis has indicated, uh, I will su support the motion. And again, not being insensitive to the fact that significant work has been done, but I think ultimately if the issue is appropriate access for the amount of people involved, then that is what guides me in voting for this, and that's why I'd support the 28th. Council Reynolds. Uh, having heard that the capacity of, of the conference room is, is only 49, which is half, 50% uh, less than the number that was mentioned earlier, and realizing that um, were there overflow, that it wouldn't be able to be broadcast, um, I'm inclined to support the motion. 
49 is, I'm sorry, is the legal number. Uh, Councilor Hines. Thank you. Uh, there's no question but what is much better for the public and for that issue if we hold it in the city council chambers where if it is not quite full, you can hold the meeting. If you try to do it in con A and we run into a problem, we'll have further delay and I would not want to see it further delayed. Any further discussion? Are you ready for a vote? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? It passes. Now we are down to uh, approval of grants and donations. The first one is the acceptance of a donation to Art Speak for added uh, coordinator service for $5,000. Now this is an anonymous donation. So moved. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed. Uh, acceptance of donations to the Mayor's Blue Ribbon Cemetery Committee, and I will basket these. They're Sheraton Har Harborside Portsmouth Hotel and Conference Center for $500. Middle Street Baptist Church Men's Club for fifty dollars. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed. Acceptance of donations to the new library building fund, and I do have one that I want to enter onto this. Paul F. and Jane E. Harden, one hundred dollars. Prince Family Revocable Trust of Wayne K. Uh, Price, sorry, trustees, and uh, also Price, uh, trustee for $500. Uh, w. Bradford and uh, Catherine C. Greeley, $15. J. Robert and Jane M. Schutz for $100. Virginia L. Jenis, trustee, Virginia L. Jenis, revocable trust, $10. And the one that I want to uh, <laughs> enter in onto that is I received this today, and it's a check from Kevin LaFawn for $250. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed. Uh, now we're down to the acceptance of the donations of the Portsmouth uh, Police Honor Guard. Now, who would like to do that? Come on, counselors. Who would like to read it? Your Honor, um, I move that um, we accept the donations to the Portsmouth Police Department, and they are as follows. Miss Mary Jean Champlin for $75, Mrs. Pete Cashman for $25, and a donation to the Honor Guard and a donation to the Bureau of Investigative Services in the amount of $500 from Crime Stoppers towards the upgrade of camera equipment needed for crime scene response. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed. The next one is... Um, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Very good. All right. So uh, now we're down to consideration of the resolutions and ordinances. The first one is first reading of ordinance amending chapter 10, article 7, flood plain development, proposed amendment to the city's 1995 zoning ordinance regarding the adoption of the flood insurance study and rate map. Yes. Uh, Council Whitehouse? Yes, Your Honor, I move to pass first reading of the amended ordinance as submitted sure. and hold a public hearing and second reading at the March 21st, 2005 City Council meeting. Second. Very good. Discussion? Yes. Councilor Whitehouse? Uh, yes, Your Honor, I'd like to... Uh, I looked back to my files uh, looking for the map that was presented to the Council back in 86. I can't seem to find it. Flood, flood zone map. I was wondering if our city manager can come up 
for that map so I can be aware of what's available. Uh, why don't I have Rick uh, Hopley come down. Uh, that map, uh, we can, do you want it reproduced? Well, I would like a portion of it. Can it be condensed down to an eight and a half by 11 sheet? Well, I'll ask Rick. <laughs> Rick? If you want, you can come by the building department and take a look at it. All right. Thank you, John. Uh, Council Whitehouse, you are speaking of the map that would be in your geographic area? No, not particularly. The whole city um, uh, that was produced in 86. Can that be combined just, say, um, the central business district and beyond, a little ways beyond the central business district that identifies the floodplain zones? Yes. It may be more than one map. The city is broken into various map segments, and so depending upon which area you want, well, it may be overlapping segments. So it can't be condensed uh, down to, say, two or three, eight and a half by 11 sheets? You'd have to know exactly what you wanted, Counselor. We, that's why I'm suggesting you go and take a look at the map, and then we can reproduce it. Okay, I'll tell you what I'm really interested in. <clears throat> All our sewer and, and, and water separation that we've done under the 201 study, I'd like to know if any of those areas, such as Lincoln Avenue, Richards Avenue, parts of South Street, parts of Parrott Avenue and uh, Richards Avenue, uh, other areas up on Dennett that were separated, mm -hmm. was any of those areas in the floodplain zone identified in the 1986 map? We can find that out for you. Okay. I don't know the answer tonight. Yeah. Yeah, we'll, we'll work on that. You talk about all the uh, under the uh, 201 study. That's right. Yeah, yeah. sure. But just curious. Now, don't don't give me heck if I send you a lot of paper, Counselor. No, 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 John. Okay. I, 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 the, the areas that I just identified. That's what I'm particularly interested in. The sewer and water separation under the 201 uh, study that we are implementing now. Does anyone else have discussion before the vote? You all ready for the vote? All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed. Thank you very much, sir. I think the boss said you could go home now, Rick. <laughs> <laughs> Anytime, Rick. Um, okay, now we're down to first reading of ordinance amending Chapter 7, Article 3, Section 7, Period 330. No parking, Subsection A. Crescent Way, south side, from Kearsarge Way to 40 feet west of Saratoga Way. South side, from Parkless Way to the end of the street. North side, from Kearsarge Way to 80 feet west of Parkless <coughs> Way and Preble Way. South side, from uh, Ranger Way to Kearsarge Way. North side. 20 feet east of Ranger Way to Kearsage Way. What's your wish, uh, <laughs> Councillor St. Laurent? Okay, I move to pass first reading uh, of the amended ordinance as submitted and hold a public hearing and second reading at the March 21st, 2005 Council meeting. Do I get a second? second? Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Presentations and considerations of uh, written communications and petitions. The first one is a letter from Nancy Nomile, uh, Sexual Assault Support Services, requesting permission to hold the 13th annual SA Walk on Sunday, April 17, 2005. Move to city manager with power. Second. Discussion, Harold? Uh, yes, there's a, looking on my uh, schedule, there's another walk also, muscular dystrophy walk, starting off at the same time. I hope they don't run into one another. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I hope they don't have to know. I hope they do. <laughs> you are ready to vote on this? Yes. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed. The next one is a letter from Keith and uh, Kathleen Melanowski. Hope I pronounced that wrong. Right. KC Realty Trust requesting permission for a continuance of placement of dumpsters behind his building located at 8488 Pleasant Street. Your Honor. Uh, Councillor St. Laurent. 
Yeah, I move that this letter be referred to the Traffic and Safety Committee for report back. Second. Very good. Yeah, Discussion one. on that one? Yes, Harold. <laughs> I hope you don't get upset with me, Mayor. Oh, no, 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 no. Um, this that. is an issue, in my opinion, is going to end up before the planning board or the planning department. This is an issue in reference to boundaries. So the, you can refer to the traffic and safety, but I think it's going to be moved on to another, another board. So, Your Honor, should I address that? Yes, <clears throat> Bob. Uh, this issue has actually arisen because we've resolved the boundary problem. Okay. And uh, we've determined that the boundary of Church Street behind those buildings that are between Church and Pleasant is actually the building. So that everything that is not the building is city property, with the exception of about two and a half feet behind the, uh, the old customs house. That, Mayor? Yeah. yeah so this is something new that's come about within the last, say, two months or so, three months? Yes. Okay. Thank you. All ready for the vote? All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Now we're down to uh, the city manager, and John has just one item that requires action because he's just back from vacation. Doesn't he look wonderful? <laughs> You're wonderful, Your Honor. Okay. Um, yeah. <laughs> the dim memory. Here we go. Um, Your Honor, the uh, item is report back uh, regarding Avanti development, the proposed conveyance of municipal land located in Atlantic Heights. Uh, David Holden is here from a planning department. I'd like to have Dave come down and talk about uh, the uh, history on this, which is long. And... Um, you know, he'll go over the recommendation from the planning board, which I've attached. But, David, do you want to explain what the planning board did and uh, recommendation? Yes, Your Honor, the uh, planning board has considered this request, and it's also considered this re request previously. Essentially, what you have out in Atlantic Heights is some land that is left over from the overall development of the site in 1918-1919. That area has not been used. Uh, it was determined that it belonged to the city, and a request was made by uh, parties to incorporate that land into land that they also owned so that they could do uh, further development. Long story short, this uh, was referred to the planning board. <laughs> the recommendation was back that the land should be uh, provided. There were issues, though, over what the sale price of it should be. Uh, there was disagreement on that, and essentially that approval lapsed. We then started this uh, process again uh, approximately two years ago, and it sort of went through the same, similar thing, and that one did get referred back with a number of conditions, and that one also lapsed. Uh, in the latest round, it has come to, uh, the board, to the council and to the board, and this would be the third report back. And again, the request is favorable that the city should uh, dispose of the property because it's surplus. However, there is one change in the condition, and that one change in the prior conditions would be to allow the land that the city owns to be incorporated into the lot and for that lot to be used for development purposes so long as all the required off-street parking is located uh, off the street and on the site. That is the only change from the prior one. Any questions of Dave? I uh, yes, <clears throat> Councilor Pandelak. Thank you. Uh, Dave, did, has the um, matter that was brought up by the lady from Atlantic Heights tonight been addressed about the off-street parking? Uh, Ever? If, if the council goes through with the recommendation as proposed, that would be a requirement of the sale of the property. Now. If the council does go through and the property is consolidated, there will be the potential for some development out there. Um, I believe the applicant and uh, Attorney Pilich are working with how they propose that. Depending on the number of units, it may need to go to the Board of Adjustment. I believe something like two units would be allowed. I, I think you misunderstood. I didn't phrase it right to you. They said that they had approached the city to use this for off for uh, winter time to park their cars there because of the um, snow removal and whatnot. There wasn't enough parking spaces, and they were told that at that time they didn't know who, where, who it belonged to, the city or who it belonged to. Has they ever addressed the planning board about that issue? Do you know? 
Uh, no, that issue was not brought up about the ownership because when it was referred to the planning board, the ownership had been resolved to the city's favor. And we have never looked at the part about the people within the Heights being able to pass here <laughs> in the winter time. Not to my knowledge. And I'll just add to that, no, uh, Councillor, uh, we haven't, we haven't even, we haven't uh, even looked at the potential for spaces there. Um, yes, Councillor. Uh, <clears throat> After everyone else speaks here, I'd like to table this motion until we find out what the concerns are of the people at the height. Okay. Um, is that a form of a motion to? Yes. <clears throat> Let's see if we get a second. I'll second. Okay. okay, very good. All right. Uh, well, one one question. Is there a uh, question on a tabling motion, Joanna? Is there a question? Can I a question the tabling motion? Oh, you've got a yeah, question. Yeah. yeah. Okay. okay. Hold on a minute. You... I'm mixed up. Nothing. No. There was a motion to table and it was right. seconded. So okay. If there's discussion, it can be on the tabling motion. All right. No, we discussion just... on the tabling motion. All right. Thank heavens I got my um, secretary here to um, keep me straight. Never mind. It doesn't pertain to the tabling motion. Very good. All right. So you can move the motion for the tabling, Mayor. All right. I'm certain on that. I, I just would like to uh, allow the um, people to address the issue that they had about parking their cars there in the winter time or any issues that they have about that particular piece of land that I haven't heard about before. And it may be just simple as a work session with them. I don't know just how you would address it. Well, the staff would contact them. That's all, <clears throat> excuse me, that's all I want them to be able to, to address the issue that they wanted it and they couldn't have it. And that maybe we can find some other way for them to handle their off street parking. Okay, we are ready for the Before we let a developer have it. Well, it's if, on the table. If that means, I know it's on the table, and I know we're not picking a date certain for a work session, but it seemed to me that um, Ms. McIntosh talked about two things. One had been about the issue with respect to parking and whether or not that might be possible. And then the discussion was also about that they hoped any construction and design would be in harmony with that very distinct neighborhood. Um, I don't really know if I am sure if that means that the, the neighborhood folks out there are requesting that the construction does not occur and that they get parking on all the lot or that they get parking on some of it and that construction is okay. Uh, I am unclear both from that presentation and, and where we are now as to where we would be on that and that's really I think what we need to know. Okay, <clears throat> let me clarify what my motion was. I wanted to table it because there was an issue there of them not being, of them have come to the city. They said they came to the city and asked if they could use that land to park cars on it in the winter time. And they were told that we did not know who owned it. Okay. Now it is being turned over to the development. And I just want to be sure that they have their concerns taken care of before we go and give it away. That's all. I'm not interested in what the developer builds his building or anything else. That's not in our purview. That's up to the, speaking to the um, planning board. But I do want this issue to be resolved because she spoke a bit about the parking issue. That's all. Hi, <clears throat> Harold. You know, your Mayor, since you allowed a, a discussion other than strictly the tabling motion, I'm going to ask my question now. Uh, how many public hearings did the planning board have on this issue? Uh, that's something I'd like to know. Can I put this in the context, Your Honor, yes. since we're all violating yes. uh, uh, Robert's sure. rules? Um, <laughs> you know, this thing goes back to 1997. They've had approval. This this body has approved this t twice. Yeah, this will be the third time. This will be the third time. So um, I don't see a problem with waiting if, if people are uncomfortable. I mean, they've had two bites at the apple already, and they've let it lapse. So. I mean, if you're comfortable tabling it, I'll get in touch with the neighborhood and find out what they're interested in. And 
if uh, and uh, report back to the city council. I mean, this goes back to I've got. I mean, I've got correspondence from Attorney Pilich that date back uh, a number of years, and in fact, the council uh, in October of 1997, the city council voted unanimously to abandon alleyways one and two, and to also offer for sale the Butters Lot 27, the city tax map, um, et cetera, et cetera. So, I mean, this goes back a ways. Oh yes. Uh, John. Madam Mayor, perhaps Council Penalakis is tabling motion. Perhaps she would suffer not an amendment, but consider changing it to say that as part of that, we would like the report back that he refers to <clears throat> about his contact with the neighborhood and where we might then. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, I'll, I'll do that. I mean, I'll give it back to you. Sure. Okay. I mean, I'll try to aim for April 4th to That's get it back to you. Then I don't think that needs to be part of the motion. All ready for the vote? Mm -hmm. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Opposed, Your Honor. Right. Thank you. Councilor Whitehouse. You were sitting on the council when we discussed okay. that back you know, in 97. It's been a long session. It really has, Your Honor. On this <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, is there any other? Um, John's got some informational items. John? Uh, thank you, Your Honor. Um, I have those informational items. They're self-explanatory. If anybody has any questions, uh, please feel free to ask. Any questions of John on the informational things? Uh, it's the reminder of the work session for public housing. Who's the gonna? Are you coming back? Yeah, yeah, I know that. Right. Okay. Um, John has two things. Are we the Af African burial ground. Who's John? Okay, so John's going to talk on that then. Your Honor, um, are we all set with my items? Uh, are we all set with John's items? Uh, why don't you read them, John, your information? Well, I do have a reminder that you have a work session with the Portsmouth Housing Authority on March 10th, which is Thursday evening at 6.30 p.m. in Conference Room A. Also, announcement of new City Cultural Commission members, and I've listed their names. Uh, and uh, there's no City Council action required on this. Uh, the uh, Economic Development Commission will be meeting on Friday, March 11th at 7.30 a.m. in Conference Room A. And I've also attached a copy of the uh, agenda for your review. Uh, if there are any questions of me on any subject matter, I'll be more than happy to try to answer them. Very good. All set on, John? Any other? Carol, oh, what's the matter? I'm you slipping, Your Honor. I'm yes, slipping. you are. Thanks a lot. <laughs> no more right. vacation. Hold, hold. <laughs> All right, now we're down to Mayor Sorrell. Is everybody ready? Okay. Uh, let's see. Uh, request, well, we've already done that, so we have definitely, we're going ahead with the rescheduling of the work session from Conference Room A into the Council Chambers for March 28th. So that's all been decided. Appointments and resolutions, uh, and resignations. Mm -hmm. Uh, the first one is uh, consideration for the Economic uh, Commission, uh, Dana Levitson. Levitson. Uh, that's just consideration. We're going to be voting on uh, the Dog Committee, and that's Randall Leach, and I'll allow uh, Dog Chairman to uh, make the motion. Is so move this one? Second. Yeah. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Now the Board of Appeals, Anthony Savillo, and this was the gentleman I told you about. On the Board of Appeals, they have to have quite, uh, quite a thing, you know, and one of them is, uh, what is the one? You need an engineering background, a building background. Right, civil engineer, and he has it. So he's more than willing to take it on. So moved, Your Honor. Okay. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed. All right. Now we're down to the Pierce Island Committee, and this is a young gentleman that's coming on, Eric Spears, and I'm going to ask uh, Tom Farini to uh, make the motion. I'd be happy to uh, move that Eric Spear be appointed to the uh, committee for Pierce Island. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? As you can see, we're putting on a lot of new people mm -hmm. 
new blood, and um, I mean, I haven't got to my term right now. I haven't got much time left, but I do feel we're going to have to start weeding out people that have been on these committees 15 years and start to look to new blood. I think it's time for that. All right. Citizens Advisory Committee to be voted on is Barbara Driscoll. So move. move, Your Honor. Second. All in favor. Aye. 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 All opposed. Um, to be voted on the uh, Citizens Advisory Committee, uh, Stephen Lichtenstein. 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 Oh, boy, I got it. <laughs> so move, Your Honor. Second. Second. All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed. All right. Now we're down to the resignation of Mr. Oregon, who just done a wonderful job, and I'm going to ask uh, Councilor Reynolds to read the letter. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, this is a letter of resignation with regret from the Zoning Board of Adjustment by uh, by Mr. James Horgan, who who I consider a friend and who I know loves this city as much as anybody can. He has served on the uh, Zoning Board of Adjustment since March 1997. So he writes this letter. Dear Mayor Sorrell, with great regret, I wish to submit my resignation from the Zoning Board of Adjustment on which I've served since March 1997. Please be assured that no specific problem or complaint is prompting my resignation. Rather, after some introspection during a recent illness, I've decided that the time had arrived for me to step down from this activity and make way for someone with new en energies and fresh insights. Uh, before closing, I wish to thank Lucy Tillman, the planning department advisor who serves with the zoning board for her advice and opinions over the years, not just for myself, but really for the whole community. The management of a zoning code is difficult and frequently divisive process. Indeed, there were moments when I felt that our zoning system would collapse if it were not for Lucy Tillman's persistent good efforts. Her deep knowledge of both the zoning code's details and its underlying rationales were simply invaluable. But even more importantly, her firm-handed management of the code ensured that it was enforced in a fair and equitable manner for all concerned, whether they enjoyed an exalted or humbled status within our community. Fort Smith is quite fortunate to have a forthright, dedicated professional such as Lucy Tillman in its planning department. Second, I wish to express my regard and esteem for the fellow board members with whom I've worked in the past seven plus years. In my opinion, which is admittedly biased, I believe that the Board of Adjustment is the most difficult assignment the city can ask of a citizen, if for no other reason than more and more petitions for zoning variances are becoming extremely legalistic and argumentative in nature. Not to mention that the Board's workload of cases seems to be growing almost exponentially. Yet the Board of Adjustment members soldier on month after month dealing with each case with great aplomb and careful concern, whether it be a minor request for a new deck or a major commercial proposal that threatens the integrity of a surrounding neighborhood. Their dedication never ceased to amaze me since they received no compensation and very little recognition for their work. Indeed, their main recognition seemed to be an occasional critical editorial in the local newspaper. It was a great honor to serve with a group of individuals whose only wish was to offer some service back to their community. Finally, I wish to thank you, Mayor, and the City Council for trusting me to serve on such an important board. I can only hope that I lived up to that trust. Sincerely, James O. Horgan. Thank you very much. Uh, we move to accept with uh, great regret. Second. Second. Very good. Um, uh, I'm sorry. Any other discussion? Just with regard to Jim, I would presume we'd be doing the plaque and or other typical presentation that we do under the circumstances. Certainly works. Certainly works. See, this is why this took so long, because his term wasn't up until the end of this month. So that's why we held it back. Um, very good. All ready for the vote? Hmm? Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> See, all I'm drinking is Coke. <laughs> Sure. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed. I do want to say one thing. Don't be beating on my door, everybody, for a seat on the Board of Adjustment. 
I, we will be screening each applicant. We have a new system where they come in and uh, John Bohinko and myself <coughs> sit down, talk with them to see if they have the credentials. Because to me, the Board of Adjustment is the most uh, valuable uh, department we have here, <coughs> commission we have here. And we've got to make sure we get the right one because they're deciding the future of Portsmouth. All right, that takes care of my speech. Now we're down to uh, Councillor Hines, and Councillor is going to request a work session on his African burial ground. This work session is going to be for you city councilors, because I don't think you really know what's going to be taking place. So he's going to do that. And then also his traffic and safety committee. John? Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, first, the traffic and safety committee action sheets and minutes of the February 10th, 2005 meeting are recommended for acceptance. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed. The Mayor's Blue Ribbon Committee on the African Burial Ground uh, has accepted the request of the Council uh, for a work session to discuss the minutes of the meetings so far in their actions. Mm -hmm. And as Chair, I would concede the need. Okay. I would move that we have that work session at the earliest possible time, but given the number of work sessions currently on the board, I, I would hesitate to choose a date. A date. Uh, John? Your Honor, um, the date that I see Monday, and, and maybe Kelly help me out here, um, Monday, April 11th, uh, that does not appear to be a regular council meeting. It looks like an open date. Um, if you wish, we could put it in for that date, given that any, really, the action would not um, delay any work or anything. Um, so April 11th is the first date we have available. How's that sound to the counselors? Sorry. Sound all right? Yep. Yep. And I hope you'll come to that work session. It's very important. I learned a lot of things I didn't know. I, uh, Harold? Now, Your Honor, you mentioned that it will not be with the committee the burial committee. It will be just with the city council. You mentioned before that. So can you straighten me out on this? Uh, no, the committee will be there. All right. And uh, John? You know, Your Honor, I, and I, I don't, I guess one of the things that we might want to consider, we don't have to, but uh, the other uh, group that I think might be useful to have there would be the traffic and safety committee, uh, don't you think? Yeah, uh, that's true. Because you know, it's going to get referred to them anyways yep. at some point. So maybe we ought to have the Blue Ribbon Committee um, and uh, and the uh, Traffic and Safety Committee, whoever can make it. Right. The Blue Ribbon Committee is made up of six uh, citizens and uh, Steve Parkinson and John Burke and uh, Suzanne Woodland. Uh, as the legal representative and secretary. Okay. So, Honor, I'd like uh, to second that motion. Yeah. With those people, uh, I think that uh, the council can mm -hmm. probably get the answer to all of their questions. Do you, do you think, Councillor Hines, that we should have the Traffic and Safety Commission there as well, committee? I, I would uh, think that might be a good idea because it addresses a very difficult uh, situation in right. parking. Okay. Very good. 6.30? 6.30. 6.30? Yep, 6.30. Okay. All right. Are uh, we all ready? I don't know. For the vote? Uh, Your Honor, just yes. I, I, one query on this. Is that something we're eventually going to be sending to the planning board to? No. no. We, we shouldn't need to do that? Okay. I'm just... No, it would, and I, I'd ask Bob to correct me if I'm wrong. I think what we'd want to do is get the advice from the Traffic and Safety Committee. You ultimately have the right to close streets or okay. make streets okay. one way or do whatever you need to do. Is that correct, Bob? That's correct. <laughs> so typically, whenever you do any kind of change in traffic patterns, you typically send it to the Traffic and Safety Committee for report back. Okay. All right. Uh, Thank you. Your Honor, if I may, yeah. uh, 
it might pay to read the minutes of the Mayor's Blue Ribbon Committee on the African Burial Ground. They're in the book. They pretty well address the questions that we address and provide the votes of the committee on those issues. So it would be a good starting point to read those, and then when we have a work session, uh, we'll probably be a little better informed. Are we all set to move the question? Yep. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Now we're down to uh, any miscellaneous uh, business. No, uh, Harold, you don't have any, do you? <laughs> Did he have his hand up? No, no, no. Okay. I'll take the place of Harold this evening, though. Oh, Adam, okay. uh, with pride. With. Thank you. Uh, I want to uh, thank uh, um, a couple of folks. Uh, I'm working, some of you may know, uh, from Russia as part of the Partners for Peace uh, project. Uh, we've been doing this for several years. We typically have these delegations that are typically part of the former Warsaw Pact states, uh, come to New Hampshire for a week uh, to exchange ideas about uh, democracy building as well as emergency management, uh, how we can work together with countries to make uh, all these countries involved safer uh, against terror, man-made, and natural disaster. Um, we have a group from Russia, probably our highest profile delegation, very high-ranking officials have been great, and we were in the neighborhood, and the mayor was exceptionally kind. Uh, they came by. Uh, exchange gifts, and I think uh, had a really positive experience. So I want to thank the mayor for giving some uh, some valuable time and uh, really kind remarks to them, as well as uh, to the fire department. Uh, there were some members of the fire department uh, who gave some time, including the chief. Uh, we had some great questions from the delegation, who are high-ranking officials in fire and law enforcement back in in their home country, and. Uh, they answered every question, gave a lot of their time, more than I ever expected them to, and were really generous. And that's the sort of thing, beyond just the policy discussions we have. Our experiences, a lot of that personal interaction is what helps create the bonds when we send our people to their countries. That's the stuff they talk about, is the, the really one-on-one um, -on -one conversations, and they had a couple of them, both with you and with the fire chief. So uh, they're appreciative and so am I. Thank you, Stephen. I do want to tell everybody out there, they'll get a boot over this. That is the first time, and I've had a lot of people come to me from all parts of the world. That was the first time I ever been kissed on my hand. It is a classy group. <laughs> and that, classy. And that was, now i got to get this right, that was by Pooch Couch. Uh, pretty close. Uh, it took about two weeks of practicing to get it about that close. But it, yes, uh, it's the Lieutenant General. He would be the equivalent of the uh, Deputy Secretary of Homeland Defense for the entire country of Russia. So these are pretty influential people, and like I said, apparently very classy as well. So yeah, I appreciated the, uh, the time. Yeah, really yeah. nice. Move people. to adjourn. Uh, okay. Second. Did you say second round? Yes, okay, <laughs> all in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed. Yeah. Don't forget now, tomorrow is Dr. Seuss Day in the city, yep. and I hope you're all going to be doing a little reading of a book. If you're not, come up and help the mayor, because I'm going to be doing first grade. And work session Thursday night. And a work session Thursday night. Boy, John's got to uh, go in every night. He's got that letter. Will you give that to Suzanne? Uh, I wanted to put it in the packet uh, for all the other, yeah. so the other people on the committee. Kelly, I'm sorry. I wasn't with it.